is a Lotto Kopecky we've seen the past month the strongest Lotto Kopecky we've ever seen? Yes. Are the Netherlands the team to beat during the women's road race? Yes. Is there a chance for an outsider to win the women's road race? Yeah. Will Belgium grab a gold medal in a men's individual time trial? Yes. I've got the spots, the sickness. There's the twins in my brain. Lotte Kopecky, Demi Vollering, Annemiek van Vleuten, Madeleine Reusser and many others. It's time to swap the men's names for those of the women as it's time for the Women's World Championship Road Race Preview. And joining me in this preview are Bram and Dieter. Welcome, guys. Hey. Hello. Tell me, are you guys recovered already of that stunning Men's World Championship? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, a lovely World Championship uh, and uh, great racing. Uh, but there's been also like uh, now with the, the U23 just ending uh, and the women's racing coming up, like the World Championships, World Championships just keep on going. Exactly. All right. Um, all eyes on the women's race now. And let's face the course first. Um, the women's peloton will be served a 154.1 kilometer course, which is yeah, average, not super long. It's the amount of kilometers of, of a normal classic. But the total elevation gain will be around 2,220 meters. And compared to Tour of Flanders, that's 1,500 meters, Strade Bianchi, 1350, Amstel Gold Race 1850, and Liège 1550. So 2200 is quite high. It's basically the hardest race on their calendar, I think. Um, quite a bit different compared to the men's uh, peloton. Um, I don't know if the the stage for the Tourmalet was was more uh, in the Tour, um, but regardless, the course is very different, and I think it's it's going to be a very hard race for them. Um, the women won't start in Edinburgh, as the men did. They will start at Loch Lomond, if I pronounce that correctly. But Crow Road will be on the way to Glasgow. Um, in the men's race, uh, a lot of riders said that, yeah, men, my legs were burning uh, on that Crow Road. Do you guys expect some action already before we hit uh, the Glasgow circuit? Mm, I think we're going to see a break, but I think what made that Crow Road so hard was... Uh, the stop right before it with the protests um so I, I i think it will be a race a little bit different for the women's peloton if there is no protest yeah it wasn't a normal pace on on crow roads like i uh, analyzed steven's data and it was like literally literally full gas uh of that climb that's not normal for like 200 uh, kilometers to go like that's also not normal in the, in the men's peloton um, it's always hard to compare men's cycling to women's cycling. Um, in the men's race, we usually get a breakaway of six to eight riders um, during the first kilometers. Um, in women's cycling, that's sometimes a little different. Do you guys expect some bigger names already to move before Glasgow? I personally don't. Um, like, definitely not bigger names. Um, all of the, the riders that uh, um, have a real shot at the title uh, they know it has to happen on the circuit and especially with such a hard course uh, I don't think they will want to spend a lot of energy before they get to that course talking about that circuit um, the women will ride six laps uh, in Glasgow which is 85 kilometers in the men's race we saw that Denmark um, immediately tried to attack try to up the pace uh, once they hit the circuit do you expect the same thing to happen uh, in the women's peloton? The Dutch have the strongest team, I think. Um, but they have, have very different names. Like they can win with Bolving, but also with a type like Wiebes. So Wiebes is the type that wants a slower race, but Bolving wants it as hard as possible. So that's a bit what tactic are, are they going to use for who do they want to ride? I remember a saying in the, the men's preview that uh, guys like Philipson, uh, Koi, it would be too hard for them um, to be victorious. 
can we say the same thing about Weebus, or is she climbing oh. way better? Uh, what what Weebus does is isn't comparable with Philips. Like Philips isn't going to perform good in the in the Amstel Gold race. Weebus is like that's a very big difference. But still, uh, I don't keeping... expect Weebus to do well here. Yeah, me I neither. think it's too hard. Keeping in mind that 2,200 uh, meters of altitude, it will be too much, in my opinion. And also, yeah, she's in the team with Vollering, with Van Vleuten. Um, that's the, it's a different style of racing, which is very difficult, I think, on this circuit to race yeah. defensively. I think the, the Netherlands have four or five riders that can win this race. Um, if all of those are... <laughs> Uh, are going to try and be there at the end. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to control the race early on. If, for example, a, a country like Italy wants to make the race hard, as like what Denmark did, because uh, Italy has that strength to do that uh, and quick, uh, quickly just get all of the domestiques from the Netherlands uh, out of the peloton. Bram, um, you said, yeah, outsiders had a chance uh, in this race. Um, obviously, they always have a chance, but do you really believe in it? Uh, after what happened at the Olympics, you just have <laughs> to say that they always have a chance. Um, but yeah, uh, like there are, I think, the two main favorites. Uh, and then below that, I think you have a, a group of 10 riders. The two main riders. favorites being Kopecky and Vollering in your yeah. eyes. Yeah, yeah obviously. I think they're uh, they're the strongest riders for this course. Um, of course, you have a, a Van Vleuten as well, who might be able to to do really well in this course. Uh, but you have ten other riders, which you know, uh, it's a hard race, and we don't see that very often. Or a hard, as hard of a race as this on the women's calendar, you can see weird stuff happening uh, after a race is this long and hard. Some uh, weird stuff happened as well on uh, Col de Tourmalet. And before that, between Vollering and Van Vleuten. Bram, that was the moment you joked that the two of them could be together in the same room uh, in Glasgow. Yeah. Um, I wonder if that happened. <laughs> yeah, we often say about the Belgian team, uh, the Belgian men's team, that it's hard to ride as a team. But the same thing can be said about the women's team of the Netherlands. I think they have it worse uh, compared to the the Belgian national team. I think the, the Belgian national team, sometimes their tactics are a little bit questionable, but you can kind of see that, you know, they want each other to win. They want a Belgian to win. Uh, mm-hmm. At least that's, that's what I'm seeing. Other people read uh, other things into it. Uh, but with the Netherlands, you know, you have these, these team dynamics that nobody really wants to ride to make another a uh, rider from their own country win. Uh, I think that's what lost them the the worlds when when Balsamo won and when uh, in the Olympics. So it, it just they're sometimes their their own worst enemy. Dieter, uh, talking about Annemiek van Vleuten, um, do you think uh, what happened on Col de Tourmalet will still influence her race here, or do you expect her to be top level again? I think even if she's top level, she can't win on this course. So maybe she will be on, on her top level. Uh, but she, like Vollering it's, or Kopecky, yeah, she can't follow that explosion on the hills that those two have or even others. Uh, so I think even if she's in top shape, that it won't look like she's in top shape because this is just not her parkour. So... You expect the battle volering Kopecky as well. I have a Persico feeling. I really like the scores for her. Um, she can handle the rain. Uh, yeah, she's a close rider, so she she can uh, take a few turns as well. Uh, she can handle those spins. She climbs very well. And yesterday in the mixed team relay, she basically rode the whole day uh, at the front, so she looked really good. So. And she beat yeah, Vollering in the Brabant Sopel in April, so uh-huh. she know uh, how it works. Um, talking about Kopecky, is this her championship to lose? 
I don't know if it's hers to lose, but uh, I think with her and, and following, they're about, I think, a, a 45 to 55% chance. Of course, there's others as well, but in in the, the split between those two, I, I give a slight edge to Kopecky, Um because it's more of an explosive course and she's the more explosive rider. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's hers to lose. She has the best legs of her life, I think. Oh, I yeah, saw definitely. her. I saw her win the the points race on the track, and she won elimination race as well. And the way she did that, she was in control of that race the whole time. She was looking around the field, what happened, um, making those efforts. Uh, it, it it was so easy. It looked so easy. Yeah. Uh, a big benefit for Kopecky as well is that she's going to have a team that's going to ride for her. Um, but that, is the team strong enough? Uh, for Well, up until a certain point in the race, yes. Uh, I think in the last 40k, no. Uh, but before that, you're, you're going to have a Gekita, uh, a Van de Velde, who are going to be able to help. I think until the last 50k, they're probably going to be there. After that, no. I'm really afraid that if the Netherlands do the same thing as Denmark did uh, in the men's race, that yeah, the whole Belgian team, except of Kopecky, they could be destroyed. Yeah, but then you have the Netherlands riding against each other, which is also it could be beneficial <laughs> for for Kopecky, because uh, like if uh, Kopecky goes uh, and uh, Volering is maybe gapped a little bit because of a mechanical. Is Van Vleuten going to close the gap for Vollering? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> but that's just uh, those typical tactics that we always see with the Netherlands in the, the women's racing. Bram, I remember you saying before the classic season started that you're a big fan of Mariana Vos. Mm-hmm. Do you expect something of the GOAT? I think the course is a little bit too hard for her. Um, if it, yeah, it, 2,200 is uh, meters of elevation it's too much um i do think that the course it's like if it was a couple of laps it'd be great but i think the the constant repetition uh of the course is, is going to be too much she is a cross rider <laughs> she can handle the technical sections as well um but i think it's it's a bit too long and, and too hard for her we need to talk about some other names as well um for example there was a certain swiss rider climbing extremely good um at tour de france Marlene Reusser, um, she knows how to win how to win classics. But is this too hard for her, or can she be the chef's surprise? She didn't look that good in the next relay. She almost got dropped by was it Shabby, I think. Shabby, yeah. Did she crash? Uh, she, yeah, she crashed. Yeah, but she came. Yeah. On a, on a flat part, she she didn't crash that bad uh, too. She came back relatively easy, uh, but then uh, Chabé was really uh, pulling hard on the climbs, and Hoyser was on a little gap, and she closed it uh, again uh, in the descent afterward. So that doesn't look too good. Like Chabé mm-hmm. is also not a Kopecky or a Volering, with all due respect. So it's going to be tough then. But still, it's always very dangerous to give her a couple of meters. No, is, is, she's a, a joy to have her in your team, but she's a nightmare to race against, uh, I think. Um, yeah. Are there any other names popping up in your heads that could surprise us? I've got a few names written down. Looking mm-hmm. at Germany, for instance, with Liane Lippert and uh, Ricarda Bodenfeind, two strong riders. Um, Bodenfeind is still young, mm. but still... Isn't she young? Bauernfeind is, is young. I think she's 23. Uh, Li- Lippert uh, was was really good at, at Tour de France. Fam. That is true. <laughs> you can say that, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I have an interesting name, maybe. Georgie Pfeiffer. Yeah. And is then, there, yeah, a bit of home race, rain. She's very strong. Then we hit the big debate as well. Um She's also racing in the under-23 category, which is raced in the same race as the elite category, which is other bullshit, of course. 
I remember Eve and I already said that in uh, the Wollongong uh, preview last year. But we will have once again two races within the race. And now we have, um, now we get that teams cons uh, don't always have the place to bring U23 uh, riders to ride for low chances. Um, they have to domestique for uh, the elite women a lot of the time, so they can't even ride for their own chances. Uh, so that's yeah, it, that's not a race like that's. But yeah, it's it's, it's a big shame looking at the names uh, racing in the under 23 category. We really could get a decent race on its own. Yeah. You have there Shirin van Androoy, Kata Blanca Vas, Pfeiffer Georgi, Vittoria Guazzini, Victoire Berto, uh, Kerbaul, uh, Fisher Black. Come on, those are decent women. Uh, it's not yeah. like the yeah, it's not like the parkour has to be built. Eh? It's there. Just do an extra race. <laughs> like, what's the problem? It's also the the race is then super long for a U23 race for them because mm-hmm. uh, the, yeah. the men's U23 race is a couple laps shorter uh, than the the elite race. Uh, but suddenly the the women's U23 have to race the, the full length of of the women's race, uh, which is yeah, it, it's complete bullshit. Um, and and also, you have winning that is, rainbow like, jersey. Yeah, you can never show it because yeah, there are there no, are no races under 23 races. <laughs> Uh, but you also have like what Dieter said with uh, the countries bringing some U23 riders, uh, but they're probably going to have to use them as domestiques. Like you have a Van Androoy who's probably going to have to work for Volering to, to actually win the elite title. So is she going to actually be able to try and win the U23 title? I think if there was a U23 race, she'd be the main favorite for me at least. Um, but but in now, my eyes, she's even an outsider for for the elite race yeah um, i kind of really said the, the about persico yeah she has a cyclocross cyclocross skills but so does van Androoy. Mm-hmm. and if she attacks she gets freedom of the strongest team uh, being her own team so good luck bringing her back if necessary how is the spanish race called again one of the biggest uh women world tour races which van Androoy won uh, she was so strong there but I can't recall the name. Uh, Spanish Is it one? Uh, Burgos? Or? Uh, the Alfro- Trofeo Alfredo Binda. That's an Isn't Italian. That Italian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Plus. Um, I think she won that, uh, if I recall correctly, with a pretty long solo. Um, and that's was a hard course, race. Yeah. I think that raises the parkour is even harder than Glasgow, maybe. Um, it's so, 1982 yeah. square uh, yeah, meters it's, of elevation, but it, it's the it hardest one on the elevation. calendar for them. Um, yeah, says a lot that she wins it. Sure. Um, I really hope we don't have the same discussion again uh, next year, but I'm afraid we will have to. Yeah. Um, Dieter, before the start of the of this episode, you begged me to talk about the individual time trials as well. So let's start with um, the race of, of the women. Their course is 36.2 kilometers long and has 242 altitude meters. Um, with the main kicker coming at the end on some cobbles, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's a tough one. We just saw the U23 time trial like some guys were going less than 10 kilometers an hour i think and not like the the bad ones like the good guys who were in for uh, for a top 10 they were just standing still at the end like mouth wide open uh, those stones there are big gaps between the stones on a time trial bike like eight bars in the tires so you fly from stone to stone that's really not nice <laughs> Marlene Reuser, is she your main favorite? I, yeah, I think you can call her the main favorite, but I'm very curious for Chloe Deigert. Uh, a couple of years ago, before a very bad crash, she was obviously with Big Lee, the best time trialist in the, in the, women, uh, in the women's category. Um, and she already won the world title in 2019. Yeah. 
from um, this year, uh, she she starts to look very good again. She, like it seems like that she's getting to her normal shape again. Maybe if she's at her at her real top shape, she can beat a uh, in a top shape uh, horse. You already saw the under 23 men's individual time trial. That was a big battle between Milesi and uh, Alex Seegaard. Can you draw some conclusions about who who's the best suited for this kind of course? A powerhouse or a smaller guy? Still a powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple of short climbs, uh, but nothing too important that you have to be a climber or something. Uh, but what is really important is that second part has uh, slow tarmac. Uh, that's... Uh, sounds ridiculous but it's pretty important like that makes that heavier riders bigger ups, uh, absolute watts are better on the course than lighter guys like that is uh, an advantage for uh, a Marlon Reusser over uh, a Volring or for a Wout van Aert over Remco Evenepoel that's pretty important I also read that some of the tarmac has been renewed and the Belgian bonds coach, uh, he was a little bit worried about that, especially when there's some rain on the course, because um, you always have some oil uh, on there uh, due to yeah. the works on the road. Um, will it be raining the coming days or don't you know about that? Uh, it will be. Today it was dry, so we couldn't properly, properly see uh, whether it was slippery or not. But the coming days it is going to rain, so... Uh, yeah, the forecast can change a lot in Scotland, but if it rains and it's new tarmac, yeah, that's that can uh, be very dangerous. Bram Dieter said he expects a battle between uh, Reusser and Deigert. Um Is there someone else you think could be in that battle, or who's your favorite for place three then? Oh, for place three, um, I, I I honestly don't know. Uh, I think it. it there we can actually say it, it's Royster's uh, <laughs> race to lose. Uh, I think she's the dominant favorite. Um, Digard can possibly put in a, a good performance as well, of course. Um, but yeah, I think Royster is just. I think she's just gonna win it, and there's gonna be very little to do about it. Maybe is Kapeki riding it? I don't know. No, she's not no. because of okay. the track. It would be too much. Uh, yeah. um, some other names uh, might be Rianne Marcus, mm. uh, Vollering herself, Grace Brown, uh, who was fourth at the individual time trial at Tour de France, being her biggest goal of that week. And yeah, if you want a bigger surprise, then there's also Vittorio Guazzini, uh, under 23, but um, one of the coming stars on the time trial bike. Dieter, who is the best pick? Uh, I think uh, Reusser didn't look that good in the mixed team uh, relay, as I already said. Uh, that's pretty worrying, I think, so I'm going to go with Tigers. All right. Bram, <laughs> I Roy see Sitch. you doubting. Reusser. <laughs> okay. Um, going to the men's individual time trial, they will race uh, over 47 0.8 kilometers with 292 altitude meters. <laughs> um, is that a hard course for a world championship time trial? It's long, but how? why not? Like, there are elite men who race 270, 280 kilometer classics. Like, you can handle a 47 kilometer time trial. Dieter, did you watch the individual pursuit? Uh, Filippo Ganna against Dan Bigham? Yeah, like Ganna looked really bad on the track the days before. Um, in the team pursuit, when he was leading uh, the group, uh, the other team was riding away. Uh, at that moment, I, I said in the group chat, like, Ganna isn't going to win uh, the time trial world championships. And Wallonie only beats uh, Tarling with seven seconds. Like, Tarling is good, but Ganna should beat him with a bigger margin. Uh, but then in the individual pursuit, um, he closed what was it two seconds on the on the last on the one second on the last lap. Uh, he closed the two second lead on three laps or something. 
Yeah, trees. If you say Ghana won't win, who will? I find it hard because um, a lot of wins is an advantage for Even the Pool because he's more uh, arrow and Wouterlaert isn't that uh, arrow because he can't sit that deep uh, as other time trialists. Yeah, it's it's a tough one and because it's uh, a long course like this king is going to do good and he's in insane shape we saw that in the road race uh, i'm going to go for remco even pool although he doesn't look like he's in top top shape but still so remco is not in top shape there's slow tarmac uh in your opinion but still he's strong enough to beat everyone bram you must yeah. be happy uh i mean i completely agree um but also i think uh we put out a poll uh, a few days ago and it did have remco as a, as a main favorite uh, among our twitter followers at least uh, and he's also i think the, the bookie's favorite um oh. with the the couple of kickers in the course i do think it's a like those he, he can put quite a bit of time into ghana uh or uh van Aert. um but i i I expect a very good Van Aert here as well. And I'm actually I'm I'm gonna throw a, a very weird dark horse maybe, uh, but I'm very curious about Rowan Dennis because yeah. he's one of those True. where I, we haven't heard of him in six months. Uh, well, yep. he has raced, but he's like completely he, hidden away. Was but, he preparing for this one? Yes. I, I also Rowan said Dennis, you you never know. Yeah, exactly. Like if he's like Bram just said, he did. If he disappears for six months, for six months, he wins something big. After like that was the case with his second World Championship title, I think. After the troubles with uh, what was it? Uh, uh, which bike was it again? That Rowan Dennis really hated. Was it Cervelo? Uh, no. Uh, I can't remember. I, yeah. Yeah, but like then he also on the, on his own bike, uh, not a team bike. Uh, oh, the Merida. Yeah, there was the Merida. Yeah, yeah. And then on his own bike, not a bike of the team, a lot of troubles with the team and the guy totally smashed everyone in the TT. Like we also saw him being very good in the Giro this year. He pulled very long sometimes, so he still has it. Uh, I also said uh, in, in a group chat a week ago or something that Rowan Dennis is going to top three. Like yeah, he can he can be thirty fifth or he can win. That's that's Rowan Dennis. You just don't know. To close this episode, uh, Dieter, there's still another time trial to be ridden. Uh, Santa Sanchez, you you had a chat with him. Do you still yeah. believe he's able to win that one? Yeah, it's but it's a tough one. Um, it's a time trial that's uh, a lot longer than what juniors are used to. I think it's 27 kilometers and juniors are used to 10, 15 kilometers. So that's double the length. Now it's going to be like a 35 minute time trial or you're used to 15, 20 minutes time trials. Uh, but it's pretty flat outside of the outside of the punchy hills, which uh, also perfectly suits Santa. So yeah, he's he's one of the favorites, but it's a, a very strong time trial field uh, this year in the juniors, juniors, to be honest. So what did you think of his performance in the road race? Yeah, his performance was really good, but the results, yeah, didn't match how good he rode. I think he was very unlucky with the with the way the the race was raced. Uh, was ah. Uh, um, maybe I also underrated the junior race a bit, and uh, my thought was it's uh, the race is less uh, it's less long than shorter than the uh, elites and U23s uh, race, so climbers will have a tougher time to uh, get rid of uh, guys like Santa Sanchez. Uh, but the race was just full gas from beginning to start. Santa Sanchez did uh, 420 normalized power the whole day. Like, yet he, he did his best power ever over that duration. Like, he can't. Yeah, he didn't 
he 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 uh, tightened his wheel while riding like he didn't do anything wrong so he he rode a perfect race but it was just wasn't to be well, you could say that tightening your wheel while riding is doing something wrong <laughs> <laughs> all right, right guys um as a conclusion I need three names. We're doing a major prediction uh, today. Who's going to win the women's road race, the women's time trial, and the men's time trial? Bram, you can start. Uh, so uh, the women's time trial, or the women's uh, the women's road race, I'm going to start with Kapeki. Uh, the women's time trial, I'm going to go with Royster, and the men's time trial, is, I'm going to go with Remco. On character. Neither. Women's Road Race Persico, Women's Time Trial Daigert, uh, and what's uh, what's the men's the, man, the next? <laughs> uh, men's it's so difficult. <laughs> <sometimes. Damn. laughs> uh, yeah, Remco even the pool. I already said that. And Oscar Chamberlain in a juniors TT. Okay, I'm going with Kopecky in the road race, uh, Daigert in the time trial, and Remco in the men's time trial. So that's the triple Remco. Remco. This can't go wrong. Don't lose. <laughs> <laughs> Bram, it's all yours. All right. Well, that's a wrap for today's Domestique Cycling Podcast. A big thank you to our audience for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, consider supporting us on Ko-Fi or Twitter. And if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe and turn on notifications. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. I've Bye. got the sparse, the sickness, the sweet